Do you guys think Universe 11 is the cock tease universe on purpose, or what? Hello there everybody and welcome, welcome, welcome to Staring At for episode 101 of Dragon Ball Super. The perfect time to start a review series, 101 episodes in. Episode 101 is upon us and we're smack dab in the middle of the Tournament of Power. Though, I feel like the show kinda blew its big reveal of Jiren far too early and whatever actually kicks off his and Goku's fight, it just isn't gonna live up to it. Let's look at it this way. Kale is a super power scale version of Broly that shrugged off a blue Kamehameha, no sweat, and turned a flat disc of an arena made out of an indestructible material into a jagged field of rocks and rubble in an instant. Though, after this episode, I feel like the durability of this material is a little overstated there, Mr. Grand Priest. Yet Jiren just stands up, says, I've had enough of your shit, and takes her down in one fluid motion, leaving him standing face to face with Goku. That should have been the perfect moment to start their battle, and have it take up the rest of the tournament while cutting to the other members of Universe 7, and show us how well they do now that the two strongest dudes in the tournament are occupied with each other. It feels like a wasted opportunity, and I honestly don't see how they're going to one-up it. That's not to say the episode itself was bad, it just kind of feels like a step back on something that should have been done before Jiren's dick started getting swung around. I'm talking, of course, about the Pride Troopers and how they all get completely stomped into a paste. Each one of them has a specialization, and they work as a team, but it feels like they were kind of wasted. The majority of them only getting a couple minutes of a fight before being wiped out or being forced into the main fight of the episode. The main ones getting top billing were Zoire and Tupper, whose fight I believe was the most interesting and also I think the longest by just a couple seconds. And they were honestly the ones I cared the least about. They introduced the concept of combination attacks from the Pride Troopers, but their fight against Goku and Android 18 take far longer than the actual fight against the main bulk of the force where that combination is actually shown. Something I did like, however, is the implication that Android 18, with her infinite key generator, could have kicked Goku's ass. Topper has the ability to increase his weight to the point where his mere presence is enough to cause Kachin to crumble beneath him, and he uses this to immobilize Goku, causing him to sink knee-deep into the rock, only for 18 to pick him up one-handed and just toss him off the edge. It's something really, really cool to see, and it reinforces just how strong the androids are, even to this day. We also get to see Android 17 and 18 fight the general, and he just gets completely blown out by 17's ability to shield himself from his weapons, and the sheer magnitude of the twins' power. It's kind of embarrassing for the Pride Troopers. After Tuffer is KO'd, Zoire runs back to the others where we can see Caulifla and Kale versus the general, Kokot and Kettle. It's during all these battles that the Universe 11 God of Destruction gives us a few tidbits on the General, and perhaps the Pride Troopers themselves. He says that the General has conquered many planets, not saved. It kind of makes me think that the Pride Troopers are a bit more like the Ginyu Force than just the exterior. When you look at it, the Pride Troopers are kind of dicks. They go on and on and on about justice and honor and doing the right thing, but they have a history of conquering and even in this tournament, when nobody from their home universe is watching, they routinely resort to cowardly tactics, ganging up on Cauliflower when she's trying to keep a wounded Kale safe, fleeing when facing superior opponents like the androids, and all around just getting cocky and acting like jackasses. I hope that somehow, after this tournament is over, we get to see more of the Pride Troopers, but just because I want them to be bad guys. And that really makes me hope that these, this wish that you win with the Super Dragon Balls is used to bring back all of the universes that get destroyed. These guys could just make awesome villains, like an up-jumped version of the Ginyu Force, like if they took over from Frieza. Something else to talk about is how Kale is now Broly, but with control of her power. After seeing the Pride Troopers beat the ever-loving shit out of Caulifla, Kale rages out and bursts out of an indestructible prison, a word that we really really need to stop using, but somehow keeps her sanity in her rage form. It's something that Broly never really managed to do, and definitely sets her apart from Anime Hulk, and I'm wondering just how it's going to play into the rest of the tournament. 
Broly's one weakness was that he would eventually overflow with Ki and self-destruct, eventually becoming the one villain that you just have to outlast to win, and it's probably the reason why not a lot of people like him. Now that Kale has control of her power and a combo attack with Cauliflower this very Christmas in July, I hope she sticks around more than ever, if only that her personality seems to be getting a bit better. Honestly, this was a really great episode marred by a cock tease of a beginning. If Jiren's shutdown of Kale hadn't happened and it had perhaps been Cauliflower Coquette with a bubble, then it would have been a much better start and not overshadowed by the actual events within the episode. This tournament is going very, very well, and I'm hoping that it just keeps getting better and better and we get to see more and more representatives from each universe show up. The next episode seems to be leading in that the Magical Girl universe, which I think is Universe 2, is going to be the one that gets fought, and I'm really looking forward to that, because ever since we saw the little tease of their powers way back a few episodes ago, where the little girl turned into this big fat monster, uh, that was really interesting to me as a concept, and, and I'm hoping they do that very well, because every other universe has had really interesting fighters, even ones that have only shown up for maybe a couple minutes at best, and I'm hoping they continue that trend. Hi there everybody, thank you for watching my first real review of Dragon Ball Super, episode 101. Uh, I'm a little bit out of practice doing reviews in front of a camera, I will admit that. I haven't really done one like this before, but this is definitely much faster to put out and definitely would be better for weekly things like Dragon Ball Super, so it's gonna get better and the old style is still gonna remain for the bigger reviews. I'd like to just give a big ol' thank you to my patrons and those of you who watch the episode, uh, let me know down there in the comments what you think of episode 101 and where they're going to take it. I, I really, I really want to know what everyone thinks is going to happen. So thank you all for watching and I will see you a round -a -roo.